You don't want to lose your clarity, do you? That's very right, Don Juan, I said. He laughed with apparent delight. Clarity, the second enemy of man of knowledge, has loomed upon you. You're not afraid, he said reassuringly. But now you hate to lose your clarity. And since you're a fool, you call that fear. He chuckled. He then put a piece of charcoal in the pipe and handed it to me. I took it. I could not think of anything to say. I had no more arguments. I was convinced that I was not afraid, but only unwilling to lose my clarity. I sucked on the pipe and heard the chirping of the mixture catching on fire. I felt an instantaneous coat of ice inside my mouth and in my nose. I took another puff and the coating extended to my chest. When I had taken the last puff, I felt that the entire inside of my body was coated with a peculiar sensation of cold warmth. My body was numb, but I could move. I changed positions to sit more comfortably. He leaned over and ordered me in a whisper not to look at him, but to stare fixedly at a point on my mat which was directly in front of my eyes. He said that I had to look with one eye, my left eye, and that sooner or later I would see the guardian. I fixed my stare on a spot he had pointed to, and what I saw shook up the last fiber of my being. There was no other way to describe the emotional jolt I experienced. Right there, facing me, was a gigantic, monstrous animal. Never in the wildest fantasies of fiction had I encountered anything like it. I looked at it in complete, utmost bewilderment. I thought for some reason that it must be close to a hundred feet tall. I noticed that it had wings, two short, wide wings. At that point, I became aware that I insisted on examining the animal as if it were an ordinary sight. That is, I looked at it. However, I could not really look in the same way I was accustomed to looking. I realized that it was rather noticing things about it, as if the picture were becoming more clear as parts were added. Its body was covered with tufts of black hair. It had a long muzzle and was drooling. Its eyes were bulgy and round. I could not move away. It was as if I was glued to the spot. Its wings cut closer and closer to my eyes until they hit me. I felt that its wings had actually hit whatever part of me was there. I yelled with all my might in the midst of one of the most excruciating pains I had ever had. I struggled to see until it was quite dark. I finally got tired and laid down and went to sleep. What was the point of making me see that monstrosity, Don Juan? He became serious and gazed at me. That was the Guardian, he said. If you want to see, you must overcome the Guardian. But how am I to overcome it, Don Juan? It's perhaps a hundred feet tall. Don Juan laughed so hard that tears rolled down his cheeks. You were not afraid, not really. You were hurt, but you were not afraid. Every man can see the Guardian. And the Guardian is sometimes, for some of us, an awesome beast as high as the sky. You're lucky, for you it was only 100 feet tall, and yet its secret is so simple. The Guardian of the Other World is a gnat, he said slowly, as if he were measuring the effects of his words. What you encountered yesterday was a gnat, and that little gnat will keep you away until you overcome it. It was not a gnat when it hurt you, it was the Guardian of the Other World. Perhaps someday you will have the courage to overcome it. Not now, though. Now, it is a hundred-foot-tall, drooling beast. But there is no point in talking about it. It's no feat to stand in front of it. So if you want to know more about it, find the Guardian again. <laughs> <laughs>